Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. As the Bionicle storyline grew over time, we were introduced to new and exotic places within the wider Matoran universe, with one of our earliest examples being the homeland of the treacherous Rudaka, the industrious island of Zia. This island is an ecological nightmare, one that had almost all available space consumed by the factories and warehouses that formed the backbone of the manufacturing economy of the island. That being said, that available space was actually strictly limited to a ring around the outer edge of the island, with the centre of the landmass being dominated by a giant outcrop of rock known simply as the mountain. This mountain is no mere geological feature, but is in fact a living entity in and of itself, one whose hunger causes sudden crevasses to open and swallow anyone foolish enough to attempt to scale its slopes. It was later revealed that this creature of living stone was not actually a native of the island, but instead started life as a pet project of Makuta Mutran. Originally nothing more than a single small stone, Mutran accidentally left it behind after a trip to the island 95,000 years before the events of the main story. Over those 95,000 years, the hungry stone sated its appetite by consuming the locals, growing with each scene consumed until it became the dominant feature of the whole island. It is this 95,000 year growth spurt that we will be concentrating on in this video, with two main questions in mind. Just how many vortex would the mountain need to have consumed to grow to such an enormous size? And, given it had such a long timescale in which to grow, how often did it need to feed? First off, let's set up some basic assumptions. Food works very differently in Bionicle, with most instances we have seen within the Matoran universe being some form of energy absorption rather than actual consuming of meat or vegetation. Though, there are some examples of more normal eating, with the Skakti, for example, eating in a manner at least outwardly similar to how things do in the real world. Whatever way something eats within the Matoran universe, though, one thing we don't have any evidence for anywhere are waste excretions. There's no poop in the Matoran universe. Quite how all of this could possibly work is definitely an investigation for another time, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that whatever life energy is in the beings that the mountain consumes goes towards sustaining its own life processes, while the mass of the consumed beings adds to its own mass rather than being left anywhere as waste, thereby directly driving its growth. That is to say, if the mountain eats a 1 kilogram rahi, then I'm going to assume that the mass of the mountain also increases by 1 kilogram. That way, even if you want to say that some of the rahi's mass actually does go towards fueling whatever kind of life processes a hunk of living rock has going on, then the number we come to at the end of this video would only go up, meaning that these will be a good baseline for the minimum number of what we want to know. Now that we have that established, let's look into one of the key questions we are going to have to answer in order to perform this investigation. Just how big is the mountain anyway? We have a few pictures of both Zia and the mountain thanks to artwork from the Bionicle World Guidebook. Unfortunately, none of these have anything within them of a known size that could be used for scale. We do have the map of the full Matoran universe that contains both Zia and islands of a known size like Metru Nui. But, as we have discussed on this channel before, Greg has confirmed that this map is not to scale, so we can't use it here. None of the in-story descriptions of the mountain have any useful scale information in them either, so we are going to have to look at real-world definitions of mountains in order to create a reasonable estimate instead. But, as is often the case when humans try to force nature into neat boxes, it turns out that the definition of what actually counts as a mountain varies depending on who you ask. The United States Board on Geographic Names defined a mountain as being 305 metres above sea level or taller. Or at least they did until the 1970s, when they abandoned that definition. Now, the US as a whole does not actually have a technical definition for what is and isn't a mountain. The United Kingdom, meanwhile, defines a mountain as any summit 610 metres above sea level or higher, while the United Nations Environmental Programme defines several different classes of mountainous terrain. There is also the fact that the majority of mountains come in mountain ranges rather than being isolated peaks, and so the issue of prominence comes into effect. 
In order to define what in a mountain range counts as a mountain in its own right rather than simply as a part of another larger mountain, many definitions state that a mountain must independently rise at least 300 metres above the surrounding terrain in order to count. So the question is, which definition to use? Well, luckily the mountain of Zia is on its own rather than being part of a range, so the prominence question isn't an issue. As for the other definitions, both for its simplicity and for other reasons, I decided to go with the UK's 610 metre definition for the minimum height of a mountain and set the Zian mountain to be exactly this height. Also, as for why we are using the minimum definition of the height of a mountain specifically, well, you will see why later. Now that we have that, we need to define the shape of the mountain so that we can determine the target mass we are aiming for at the end of this 95,000 year period. While the mountain in reality would have an extremely complex shape with various outcroppings, crags and crevasses, to keep things simple for the calculations here, I need to pick a more basic shape. Looking at this image of the mountain from directly above, I determined that a square-based pyramid would be the best one to go for. This still keeps the overall general shape of the mountain and will still give us a figure close enough to the real figure for our purposes. I also gave the sides of the pyramid a 30 degree slope, which appears to be the average slope angle when taking measurements using this image from the Bionicle World guidebook. The formula for the volume of a pyramid is as shown here, with the height being set at 610 metres and the length of the base being worked out through some simple trigonometry from our height and slope angle figures. This gives us a resultant volume of around 0.91 cubic kilometres. If we assume that the living rock of the mountain has the same density as granite, 2,630 kilograms per metre cubed, then that means that the mountain would have an overall mass of 2,387,840,120,000 kilograms, or 398 times the mass of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If we set the original mass of the rock that the mountain grew from to be a reasonable estimate of one kilogram, then that means that it grew by a factor of two trillion over that 95,000 year time span, which I think we can all agree is an insanely massive amount. But that's only one of the calculations we need to do in this video. Next, we need to work out the mass of the average vortex to see how many of them the mountain would have had to consume in this time in order to grow to such a massive size. For that, I made measurements of my Rudaka set and the same methodology to work out her in-story mass as I used back in the Mass of Atoa video. I covered the exact steps back in that video, so I won't go over it again in detail here. But, in summary, it involves finding the volume of the set using water displacement, converting that to the equivalent volume for her canonical size, and then working out her mass from there using known substitute densities for her organic and metallic components. Please check out that video if you want to know more of the details, but the overall result is that Rudaka comes out at being 682 kilograms, or roughly 2.68 times more massive than a Toa. This is the mass we will use to represent the average vortex for our calculations going forwards. Going back to the mountain, in order for it to reach that enormous final mass we calculated earlier by the end of the 95,000 year time frame, it would need to grow at a rate of 25,135 metric tons per year on average. In terms of the number of our 682 kilogram average vortex, that equates to 101 vortex per day for a total of 3,499,561,973 vortex eaten over the full 95,000 year timescale. That is a lot of dead vortex. The rough equivalent of the combined populations of India, China, the USA, Indonesia and Uganda all put together. And sure, that number is spread out over 95,000 years, but it is still the equivalent of sacrificing two double-decker buses worth of people per day to the mountain's appetite, and doing it every day without fail for 95% of the entire existence of their species. Originally, I was going to leave the video here. I had a good number, one that was nice and big, and showed off just how insane the mountain was when you did the maths. 
But then it occurred to me, by using the calculations of the mountain's size from before, I could work out its width, and therefore use that as a measure to get a size for the whole island. Not only would this be a bit of extra fun for the video, but it would also allow for some checking of the numbers. Remember, we selected a height of the mountain based on real-world minimum height definitions. If this yielded a resulting size for Zia that was reasonable given the known size of other Bionicle Islands, then we could be confident that this was the right choice to make. If, however, it wound up being much too small, or far too big, then the numbers would have to be revisited. Going back to the equations for a pyramid from before, a pyramid with the height of 610 metres would have a base that was around 2,113 metres wide, meaning that this section of the mountain on the map of Zia here represents a distance of roughly 2 kilometres. Using that as a measuring stick and looking at the island as a whole, that puts Zia at a rather measly 7.98 kilometres in length, or only around an eighth the size of the city of Metrinui. I don't know about you, but that to me seems far, far too small of a size for the island of Zia to be. If this were true, the whole island would only be slightly bigger than the Great Furnace in Tarmetru. Clearly, the numbers in this video, as huge as they already are, are a massive underestimate. Let's scale Zia up to be at least the size of Metronui and try this again. Thanks to my measures of the image of Zia from before, I was easily able to increase the size and use the same maths to figure out the new size each pixel in the map represented, and then work backwards from there to get the length of the base of the mountain pyramid, and from there, the new height. Doing all that maths again, the new height for the mountain at this scale came out to be 4,980.41 metres, which is roughly equivalent to the tallest mountain in Venezuela, Pico Bolivar. At this height, the new mass value comes out at over 1 quadrillion kilograms, 544 times larger than our previous estimate. With this higher mass comes a far, far larger amount of vortex needed to feed it. Running those numbers again, we get a total of 1 trillion, 904 billion, 668 million, 618,848 vortex eaten over the full 95,000 year timescale. While exact estimates vary, the general consensus is that there have been around 100 billion members of our species that have ever lived on Earth. This means that the mountain has eaten 19 times more vortex than the number of humans who have ever existed. On average, that works out at being 54,929 vortex per day. That's the equivalent of the entire capacity of Wembley Stadium in London being consumed every one and a half days for 95,000 years. We often get comparisons to the human body when talking about the Great Spirit robot, the Matoran or its cells, Metronui is its brain, etc. In this way, I think the mountain best fits the description of a tumour, an ever-growing mass within the body, consuming the resources around it with no other purpose than its own growth. A dark comparison, to be sure, but one that I find quite fitting for the corrupt, polluted land that this foreboding peak calls home. Well, that cheery thought is what brings us to the end of this video. What did you think of the conclusions we came to, and what do you think I should cover next? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you will join me again soon for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.